Hello and welcome back to Advanced Accounting 2. I hope you are doing well. This chapter will focus on what happens after control is gained over another company and it's been a few years. Since both companies have their separate entity financial statements as control was gained through acquisition of shares, not assets, we will need to consolidate the financial statements after acquisition. So can we just take the financial statements at acquisition and make some adjustments? <laughs> I wish it were that easy. But then again, if it were easy, they'd need fewer accountants and that is just a sad, sad thought. Because the entities exist separately and therefore have their separate entity financial statements, the time period after acquisition, when control has occurred and some years have passed, we need to, quote, reinvent the wheel. We need to recreate those consolidated, consolidated financial statements each and every year as the starting consolidated financial statements do not exist anywhere. Remember, that's why we need the worksheet. The worksheet is where we take the separate entity financial statements and do a bunch of work to get our consolidated financial statements. Beginning consolidated financial statements don't exist anywhere. We don't book worksheet entries anywhere other than our worksheet or you know, in big corporations in the back of the software because the separate entity financial statements exist, consolidated financial statements exist, but consolidated financial statements only exist after doing a bunch of work to the entity financial statements. So those journal entries aren't actually booked anywhere other than in the worksheet or the background of some consolidation accounting software. Okay, so therefore, because those consolidated financial statements aren't living and breathing, you know, throughout every month and quarter end, etc., we need to, um, it's up to us to make those starting consolidated financial statements at the beginning of the year, for the beginning of the year, as if they were at acquisition, and then we get to reflect the economic reality of the transactions which occurred during the year in order to get us ending consolidated financial statements. Really, the whole point of the beginning of the year consolidated financial statements is to ensure that opening retained earnings is correct and to set the stage for what needs to be done during the year such that our consolidated income statement is correct. Together, they will provide a comprehensive picture of the current economic reality of the past control acquisition. Whew. All right, we got some steps, we got some chapters, so I just really wanted to revisit kind of why we are here and why consolidation subsequent to accounting date, this chapter, is so different from what we've been really leading up to up until this point, which led us to consolidations at acquisition date. I recognize that was a lot. Uh, the rest of this video will act as a refresher on topics we have previously covered as they will be a starting point for our consolidation subsequent to acquisition date, similar to how they were the starting point uh, for uh, the at acquisition date portion. So let's look at these methods of accounting while looking at the investment in a subsidiary, uh, that is an entity that another corporation controls. We have two separate allowable methods under consolidation, uh, the cost method and the equity method. Um, <laughs> there may be an exception to the cost method. Uh, it could be that if it is under ASPE and it is a company that is controlled and that company is uh, on a listed financial uh, market, then you would have to use fair value. But that's a very, very deep nuance as, think about it, in, you'd have to have control over an entity that is publicly listed. Okay, uh, so here we're gonna focus on the starting points of the subsidiaries accounting, the subsidiaries entity specific books, either being in cost or equity. Pardon me, either the entity specific is on the um, is on the parents books. The subsidiary is on the parents book at either cost or equity. Now, please note that where we're getting to the consolidated, the parent plus the sub, the consolidated net income will be the same regardless of which 
um, starting method on the parent's book is used, whether or not the parent has decided to account for um, the entity under cost or under equity. And that means the consolidated retained earnings will also be the same. So under, uh, under the cost method, the investment is initially recorded at cost, and then it stays there. Dividends declared by the subsidiary are reported as investment income, and this is quite a bunch simpler than the equity method. Uh, we just plunk it on at what we paid for it, and we leave it there, unless perhaps there is subsequent impairment, uh, or when we sell the company. Now we have the equity method. The investment is initially recorded at cost, so just the same as the cost method, but then after the investment is initially recorded, the parent's proportion of the subsidiary's net income increases the investment account. So that investment asset can increase or decrease if the subsidiary has a net loss. Also, when the parent receives dividends, that from the subsidiary, this actually reduces the investment account because it's kind of like a refund. That's why this is kind of, you know, skin in the game, like we are tied to one another and if you win, I win, and if you pay me back a refund, I have to reduce the investment. Um, this you win, I win is also known as a one-line consolidation. So the nickname for the equity method is one line consolidation because we are essentially reflecting the economic reality of this significant influence transaction throughout one line, which is that investment account with the, uh, with the other end being in retained earnings. Okay, let's test your knowledge. Which of the following is false? Under the equity method, when a sub declares dividends, it decreases the investment account. B, I for S requires the use of the equity method. C, different methods generally result in different consolidated net income. D, different methods generally result in a different standalone net income for the parent. What do you think? The correct answer is false, meaning which of the following or for me, uh, the correct answer is C, which means that C is false. Different methods generally result in different consolidated net income. Uh, so no, using either the cost or the equity method will result in the same consolidated net income as intercompany revenues and expenses are eliminated during consolidation. Alrighty, thank you so, so much. Uh, you are off to a great start and I will see you in the next video.